in a series of six lessons. And this series is entitled Season to Rejoice. Season to Rejoice. And this is now the uh, fourth lesson. I want you to read the opening paragraph of our outline, the outline of our lesson this morning. If you do not have, raise your hand. Somebody will give you a copy. Let us read together the opening paragraph. Okay, together now, ready? Read. Christ's arrival on earth at a dark time in history signified that God had not forgotten mankind. In fact, He had been orchestrating a plan to eliminate the burden of sin that separated us from God. In this joyful season of the year, we are reminded that no matter what is going on in the world, around us, and no matter what burdens we carry, there is always joy in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this series, we are taught that Christians are called to be thankful. In this series, we are taught that Christians are called to hope. We Christians are called to worship, and we are called to rejoice. That is the subject of our lesson this morning. So, I have already mentioned this in the first part, but uh, it is worth repeating that the words rejoice, joyful, joy, glad, gladness, happy, appear 546 times in the Bible. 546 times in the Bible. 404 times in the Old Testament. And 142 times in the New Testament. With that, what impression can we derive from the Word of God? God wants us to be joyful. God wants us to be happy. He does not. He did not create human being uh, to be sad, but to be joyful. So, this season of the year is filled with rejoicing when most people in the world are celebrating Christmas to signify the birth of Jesus Christ. People are singing Christmas carols which are characterized with what? So much joy. So much joy reflected in the lyrics of, of these uh, songs, also in the melody and also in the tempo of the songs. And so this morning, we rejoice not because we join the world who are celebrating Christmas, but because of the gift of eternal life that we now possess. Because the Lord Jesus Christ was given to us from heaven. The goals of this lesson, part two, are number one. Recognize one of the major prophecies that foretold, the blank there is foretold, the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. Okay, fill in that blank please. Number two. Identify the three attitudes of people that have no room for God in their lives. God was born in a, and was laid in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Okay? So identify the three attitudes of people that have no room for God in their lives. And third... Understand that joy of Christmas is only made possible because of the work of Jesus Christ. Work on the cross to secure our forgiveness of sins and eternal home with God. Three points in this lesson and these are joy in His providence or in His timely care, joy in His presence, and, and, uh, and the thirdly, there is joy in his provision okay since this is the second part of the lesson which we started last sunday we will begin and let us begin the second part uh, of this lesson with point number two letter b point number two letter b because letter a point number two is joy in his presence letter a is the place was determined the house of bread the bread of life was born in the house of bread. Bethlehem is, um, the meaning of Bethlehem is the house of bread. So let there be, the Savior was delivered. The Savior was delivered. Okay? 
We notice that in the scriptures, while in Bethlehem, Mary brought forth her firstborn son. While in Bethlehem, Mary brought forth his first, her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Okay, going back to our text, Luke chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, it says, And so it was, verse number 6, Luke's, uh, uh, Luke chapter 2, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him a swaddling clothes. So I made some study of this swaddling. And uh, ang uban, bakbak, binisaya, ang uban, noog, but ang uban sa lampin. Uh -huh. Lampin, swaddling clothes, strip of clothing, uh, lampin. And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And what a humble scene for the birth of a king. What a humble scene for the birth of the king. Okay, Brother John. What a humble scene, okay? There you are. In the standard of the world, in the standard of the world, you do agree with me that a king cannot be born in that way. How can he? Be born in that way. Kuan pagyod, puyanan sa mga mananap. Baho pagyod kayo. Onya, girijik pagyod sila. There was no more room, no? There was that rejection. How can, in the world standard, in the standard of the world, a king be born like that? But the eternal Son of God, when coming to earth, was born in a place surrounded by animals. And had his first bed. What was his first bed? A manger. A place, a box where you will find food for horses and cattle. Termino niyang katri ba? Kananan sa mga butanga nagpagkaon sa kabayo o sa mga sa mga baka. Ang iyang termino ng katri. Munang og magsudong tanan to pertir gitang paghambog giroha sa atong manluluwas no so and had his first bed a box where horses and cattle find their food to eat a humble beginning and to end up in a humble obedience also the beginning was very humble and the end of his physical life here on earth was so humble enough to obey to the death at the cross at Calvary. So, people of the world decorate their homes with blinking and bright lights as they celebrate Christmas, but most of them have no room for Christ in their hearts. As it is stated in our text, because there was no room for them in the inn, likewise also. Many people are celebrating who are celebrating Christmas would have no room in their heart to receive the Lord. Imong padawaton dili mo dawat to receive the Lord. So, like what was then in the days when Christ was born, the general attitude of people has not changed. Wagi na mausob. Today. The material man, the intellectual man, the religious man, if asked, do you believe in Christ? They will say yes. Many may believe Christ, but they still have their, what? Good works to form part of their salvation. So many of them are like that. My religion before I got saved teaches until now, that you cannot be saved unless you have good works. And their justification is what is written in James, that without uh, faith without works is dead. That is not what is uh, meant there. That is not what is meant there. Faith without works is dead. Meaning, it is not about the faith that, you, that, uh, that uh, 
that needs uh, w w that one ha ha needs to have in order to be to be saved but it is the faith to demonstrate that you are really a child of God the faith that that would show that you really are a child of God is the faith that is not dead that is what is meant there not salvation because we are not saved by good works so today the material man the intellectual man and the religious man may believe Christ, but there is, there is still that good works to form part of their salvation. And uh, we know from the Bible that salvation can never be earned. It can never be earned with good works. You agree with me? It can never be earned with, with our good works and therefore cannot give us any reason to boast. In his personal letter to Titus, Paul says in Titus chapter 3, verse number 15, he says, not by works of righteousness. These are good works, okay? You and me are capable of doing. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but, Paul says to Titus, according to his mercy, he saved us. According to his mercy, not according to the works of righteousness which we have done. He, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, there is our salvation. There is nothing there that would merit your good works and my good works. And Paul would repeat that to his epistle to the believers in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Verses 8 and 9, it says, verse 8, Ephesians 2, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, meaning you are not responsible for your salvation. You have no contribution to your salvation. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. It does not cost us anything, and yet it is priceless. Not of works, verse number 9, lest any man should boast. Salvation can never be created by our own effort because if it were so, you and me can find reason to boast about our salvation. We cannot boast about our salvation because we have no reason to derive from because it is a gift. So, we praise God for our salvation. Joy is in His number one, providence. Second point, joy is in His presence. And the third point, Joy is in his provision. Joy is in his provision. Okay? That is the third point. First, I would like to ask this question. What was provided that day when Jesus was born? Again, I repeat. What was provided that day when Jesus was born? Do you know the answer could be could be one, but we can express it differently, right? But the answer is God. God was provided that day when Jesus Christ was born. He provided himself as the greatest gift the world had ever known. What was provided when Christ was born? God was provided. He himself provided. He provided himself. He made himself available so that you and me can have access to God, so that you and me can have forgiveness of our sin, so that you and me by faith, believing in him, accepting him, you would qualify us to heaven, having the gift of eternal life. And this was just, this was not just a mystical appearance or a spirit presence, this personal presentation. Because in Romans chapter 1, verse number 3, I want you to notice. Romans chapter 1, verse number 3. You fill in that one? Spirit, okay? Romans 1, 3 says, Concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. According to the flesh. And this was the actual Son of God in the flesh. 
the actual son the uh, the actual son of God in the flesh the Bible tells us that he who was eternally pre-existent he who was uh, eternally pre-existent took he took what the form of a man and was personally presented to the world presented to the world okay in John 1:14 and the word was made flesh with reference to verse number one in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and then verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory john says we saw his glory john peter and james witnessed the glory of christ at the mount of transfiguration and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth hear ye him this is my beloved son in whom i am pleased in the transfiguration of jesus christ witnessed by peter james and john they heard a voice from heaven and the voice the heavenly father says hear ye him this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and so, there you are. He is God in flesh. And uh, Paul would uh, emphasize that in Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse number 5. You open with me, please, there. If Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let us have the mind of Christ. It is a commandment. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man. There you are. God and he was made flesh. And being fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Who, his lineage as the son of God, as a son of David, finds detailed statements in the scripture to emphasize that not only that he is God, but he is also human. And his lineage has great details, both uh, in the Bible, found in the Bible, both by Matthew and by Luke. You can see the details of his lineage as a man. Okay? Let us first consider uh, Matthew. We will discover a wonderful family tree of the Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. In Matthew chapter 1, verse number 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Notice that. So we have David, we have Abraham, David, then Jesus Christ. This is now the uh, generation of Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, etc., and so on and so on and so on, until you reach verse number 6, Matthew 1, 6, and Jesus begot David the king. And David the king begot Solomon okay and then and so on and so forth and then until you reach verse number 16 what a detail and Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus who is called Christ now that is the presentation of Matthew concerning the genealogy the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ let us look on the presentation of Luke Okay, here is a presentation. We have Abraham, then we have David, then we have Joseph, Jesus Christ. Amen? But the presentation of Luke is different. Okay, in Luke chapter 2, verse, verse number, in Luke chapter 3, verse number 23. Okay, Luke 3, 23. This is now the presentation of Luke of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. That is why Joseph, 
during the time of Pharaoh in Egypt is a type of Jesus Christ because he appeared himself before Pharaoh when he was 30 years of age. And Pharaoh bestowed upon him the second most powerful position in the kingdom next to Pharaoh. When David also was 30 years old, he began to reign as king of Israel. 30, importante ng... Kisa may gaidad na itong 30. 30, please. 30, 30. Naabay gaidad na rin. 30. Kina ko si Brother Miharis mo isa. <laughs> Nanguha na rin siyang mata. Okay? 30. What do you know? So, they, are, they belong to uh, other classes. But, okay? So, Luke said, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed. As was supposed. Being uh, as was supposed. The son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Oh, I am now confused with this one. Because the father of Joseph was uh, Jacob in Matthew 1.16. In Matthew 1.16, the father of Joseph was Jacob. Una siya, naminyo siya ni Maria, pero ang iyang papa si Jacob. Because Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary. Now, Look, Luke's presentation of his lineage is quite different. No? So, as being so, was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. So, Christ, the son of Joseph, Joseph, the son of Heli. That is according to Luke. Ah, So, gabi eh, ganyang kadlaon, pwede na kong tinoon. Okay, son of Luke, the son of Heli. In verse number 10, which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Minan, which was the son of Matata, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. Oh, there you are. So David, according to Matthew, had Solomon, his son, pak, 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 Joseph. But according to Luke, David has Nathan, pak, 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 Joseph in Christ. Hilai din Joseph. Di ka maglibo ka na. And then this is the word, there is the word, as was supposed. Uh, if you li read all the commentaries of Matthew Henry, Bible Illustrator, Bible Exposition, you will learn a lot about these uh, uh, writings, as was supposed. Ah, din man din nakakuha si look o uh, information, as was supposed. So, from history, because Luke was a great historian. And so, <clears throat> maunay nagkalatag sa history. And I started to think, unsa day culture sa Jewish, Jewish culture? Unsa day uh, Jewish culture? As was supposed. Remember, remember that when Jesus Christ confronted the unbelievers, the critics, his critics in John chapter 8. You are of your father the devil. Inom na muna, John 8, 44. And then, what was the response? We are not born of fornication. Father is, uh, Abraham is our father. We are not born of fornication. Abraham was our father. Why would they respond like that? Because in their hearts, Christ was born out of fornication. You have no business telling us because our father is Abraham. We are not born of fornication. It was an insinuation actually. So I can understand if there are in the writings, in the history, something like that. But it doesn't matter anyway. Because the penalty for your sin and my sin was paid by Christ at the cross. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? What will it profit a man if he has all the knowledge of the entire universe and he will lose his soul and spend eternity in hell? It doesn't. So, I will not delve on that one. But, uh, but we see 
according to the flesh, there is that detailed presentation of the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ put on a physical body to come to earth and live among us. Okay? That is very important. He displayed all the attributes of human beings. All the attributes of a human being while here on earth physically. He was hungry. He was thirsty. Tao man siya. And then, he was happy. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice not that the Spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He was happy, but he got mad also. Gitulimbang niya ang mga, ang mga lamisa sa uh, uh, money exchangers sa templo. Kay nasuko siya maayo. And he was tempted also. And he wept when we, he, nga iyang gisudan, when he beho, uh, beheld Jerusalem, he wept. The shortest verse, Jesus wept. John 11, I think 35. So, he displayed all the attributes of human being. And yet, Peter also saw his glory. Be that as it may, but Peter also saw his glory while in that human form at the Mount of Transfiguration. In Matthew chapter 17, verse number 1, you will notice this verse. Matthew 17, 1, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter and James and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. Unto a high mountain apart. Verse 2, And was transfigured before them. There was a sudden change in his physical form. And that change was noticed by these three because the Bible says, was transfigured before them. Nasudong nila na. And his face did shine as the sun. Matthew was not there. Of course, the writer. But he could have, he, he heard the testimonies of the three who were there. At the mount. So, he did, uh, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Oh, you imagine that. You imagine that. If the face of Jesus Christ changed in physical form to look like a sun, di kakatutok ano eh? Kasuaw anang adlaw? Di ni mo matutokan ba? And ikaw kuno, kauban mo ni Jesus Christ for the last three years. And this is a near crucifixion. Maybe 36, 36 plus, plus 6, 42. Maybe 40 months, no? Maybe 40 months. Uh, mau ba? Dili, dili. 36, yeah. 40 months. Maybe 40 months. 42 man. On the 42nd month, gi-crucify man siya. Aning mga panahon na, dugay na mong kuyog niya. And then you see him as a person. Except that, daghang kaing milagro nga gipanghimo, unya karo nakita ni mong ang, ang iyang naong dili matutukan, you cannot, you cannot uh, stare at his face because it was shining like the sun. Pwerte ni mong kahibuong, oy. No? So, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. The whiteness of the raiment of Christ is not like what Brother Juju is wearing and Brother Cording. The whiteness, because it is described as like a light, meaning it also shines, maybe like this fluorescent lamp. It is white. I think this is a very good illustration. And that one there. Kanilang, kaya matutukan man nato. Dili parehag adlaw ang iyang sinina. Pero parehag light. Nagsiga. An ang iyang naong, murag adlaw. Woo. You see? So, not only did Peter see, 
but he heard God speaking from heaven concerning his son in verse number 5. When it says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The three apostles, Peter, James, and John, were commanded to hear Jesus Christ. Hear ye him. And later in his life, Peter wrote pertaining to this event. I want you to, to see the writing of Peter concerning this event in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 18. What did Peter write in this particular portion of the scriptures? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. And this voice, Peter says, which came from heaven, we heard. And when we were with him in the holy mount, when we were with him, at the Mount of Transfiguration. So, we have the joy in His provision first, a personal presentation. Second, a spiritual presentation. A spiritual presentation. Letter B. Okay, thank you very John. This was also a spiritual presentation because He who was the Son of Mary was also the Son of God. The Son of Mary at the same time the Son of God. Conceive of the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 1, verse number 4. Open with me, please. To the book of Romans chapter 1. And in verse number 4, it says, And declared to be the Son of God, pertaining to Jesus Christ, with power. With power. According to the spirit of holiness. The power is according to the spirit of holiness. Why this is an important statement? Because such power should not be polluted by what? By abuse. According to the spirit of holiness. Power coming from God should not be, uh, should not be exercised with abuse. That is why those people who are in power, sometimes, if not all of them, are being accused of exercising their power with abuse. Abuse of authority. Guilty ang mga powerful nga tao ni Ana. But the Bible speaks about the, the power of Christ according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of from the dead. Verse, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 32, the Bible says, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. In the millennial reign, he will reign with the saints for 1,000 years here on earth before this earth is going to be melted with fervent heat. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 9, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Him, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is why we have Trinity. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Godhead in him so because Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit and being the Son of God he was the only one that could have done the work of redemption you agree with me he was the only one not anybody not an appointed Son of God because he did not, he, he, did, he is not sh shedding his blood. How can he redeem mankind? And there is no, nothing to that effect that we can see in the scriptures that one day there is going to be another man, an appointed son of God, capital S. So I am sad. I am sad of what is happening there at Davao. I'm not here to condemn him. But I'm just sad because a lot of people believe in that kind of teaching, in that kind of doctrine. So, he could not have done the work of redemption on the cross to make possible the forgiveness of sin and the gift of God, which is what? Eternal life. Ah, virgin, eternal life, okay? Now, we rejoice because you and me had been pardoned of our sins. Because God has made you and me His children. 
adopted children, but we do not receive papers of adoption. Very boy, we do not receive papers of adoption. Very boy is a, a law graduate, so understand this one. We do not receive papers of adoption because if you have a paper of adoption, it is going to be witnessed and it is going to be signed by notary public and it is going to be sealed, right? We do not have like that, but we have the witness of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. And the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And it is not a metal seal. It is not a metal seal, but it is the seal of the Holy Ghost. Wow, we rejoice in that one. We rejoice because we had been pardoned. Because our sins had been forgiven. Because Jesus Christ shed His blood at the cross. We pleaded for His mercy who received the penalty for our sin. Siya mo inidawat sa sa penalty. Bayad, no? Sa bayad. So being pardoned of all the sinful things we did, we rejoice. In 1883, listen to this illustration. In 1830, a man named George Wilson was convicted and was sentenced to be hanged for robbing the U.S. mail. At that time, President Andrew Jackson was the President of the United States. So the President Andrew Jackson issued a pardon for the man, but the trouble was George Wilson did not accept the pardon. He refused to receive the pardon. So his uh, lawyer brought the matter to the chief justice, Marshall, who after deliberating had this conclusion. Re listen to this. This is now the conclusion of the chief justice at the time who received the petition of the lawyer of George Wilson who was sentenced to die, who received the pardon. And this is, and I quote the conclusion, a pardon is a slip of paper the value of which is determined by the acceptance of the person to be pardoned. If it is rejected, it is no pardon. George Wilson must be hanged. We pleaded for his mercy that we be pardoned of our sins. We did not reject the pardon of Jesus Christ. But there are people who need to understand because until now, they are rejecting that pardon. They are rejecting that, that pardon. And it is your responsibility, my responsibility to go and preach the gospel to every creature so that they will understand and not reject the pardon that is made available for them. Thank God it was the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified for you and for me. And to the lost around us, may I plead to the lost around us. Who are these? Our loved ones. The lost around us. Our loved ones. Who are these? Our friends. Who are these? Even those people, we do not even know their names. What about it? Let us tell them. Let us tell them that the real gift to receive during Christmas is not the one wrapped with Christmas wrappers because people love to receive gifts, especially if the wrapping are very, very, very beautiful, very expensive. The real gift, mo na ito ipanabi, mo na ito isulti nila, the real gift to receive during Christmas is not the one wrapped with Christmas wrappers, but the gift of eternal life. Kanang dili makita sa mata, pero matugad sa kasing-kasing. Dili madunggan sa atong dunggan, apan ma-appreciate sa atong kasing-kasing. O magdalag, daku kayong kalipay sa atong kinabuhi. Kana mo importante nga gift. We celebrate, we celebrate in that note. And thus, we have reason to rejoice. We rejoice. Amen? The bottom paragraph says, let us read again together. 
we read the, uh, the introduction, the uh, upper paragraph, the top paragraph, then the bottom paragraph. It says, together now, really read. Jesus was born to die on the cross because we needed to be saved from the penalty of our sin. That once for all payment is sufficient to ensure a pardon from God and an eternity with Him in heaven. But God can't make us take advantage of the gift of His forgiveness. One cannot recognize the significance of God with us until he experiences the reality of Christ in his life. Once he invites him in, he will know and experience the joy of the Lord. This is the spirit behind our witnessing. Why we should witness? So that they will understand the meaning of Christ's death at the cross and the consequence, the positive consequence that it may bring upon his life. Amen? Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this lesson. Thank you for these who have come this morning. Nagkaampo ako ginoo nga kaming tanan as members of Bible Baptist Church, magatubo kami diha sa imong gahong, diha sa imong pulong, aron sa kanunay, ang, amu, ang imong kahimayaan, mao, mao kanunay ang amo ang paghahandumon, o mao kanunay ang among tumong sa tanang mga butang nga among paghahimoon samtang ni apa kami sa kalibutan. Daigon ikaw ginoo, sa mga pagtulunan ng among nadawat ug daigo ni kaog Ginoo gitagaan ni minimo privilege to serve you the true and the living God and to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ kanimo ang tanan tanang dungog himaya sa ngalan ni Kristo Hesus among ipadangat amen and amen okay